Hello, it's once again Cleantech Business Club and Tour Electric from their awards winning event, Power Summit, here in Brussels. And now we are together with the guy who apparently made the longest trip here from Australia, from Melbourne. So, first of all, you know, uh, Richard, uh, how was the trip and uh, how did you survive? It was long. It was long. Okay, that was long. But was it worth to come here actually? Absolutely. Yep. It's always good to see how other countries, how other uh, European unions are doing things that we can take back to Australia. And do you think that the content of the event, you know, all these discussions were uh, useful for you also? Different sections of it, like the DS DSNO talk today was absolutely useful mm -hmm. because realistically speaking, that's where our technology is going to be the next thing. How do we actually connect into the distribution networks? So we are speaking now with uh, Richard uh, Janssen, who is uh, CEO of uh, Dusan Grid Tech uh, Australia. Sure, yes, right. and uh, it's very interesting because uh, Richard actually in the past was working for utilities, yes? So you are coming from the utilities utility space? Utilities as well, so the distribution companies where I worked for for many, many years mm -hmm. into contracting world and then into the new renewable space. Oh, so okay, I've so come from the conservative environment, knowing how they operate, how they think, uh, into a, an emerging market. Oh, so it's actually interesting because, let's say, that you can bring the knowledge from the past and then uh, you can... So, so you are more aware, actually, what are the needs, yes? You understand how they think and how they operate mm -hmm. and their constraints and their trigger points. Okay. So from that point, then you can actually address those needs. So, so now you are at uh, Dosan. Before you were, you were also at Fluence, yes? So you have yes. quite a lot of experience in the battery side, yes? yes? So what are the issues, actually, especially when it comes to the utilities? What the issues do they ca have and which solutions we can bring as clean tech sector? Okay, a lot of it relates to the, the knowledge of what batteries can be done, how you can use batteries to solve the problems that they've got. A lot of the problems that in the utility space comes from historical processes, mm -hmm. so regulations have set for technologies that are actually 60 years old mm -hmm. and aren't actually designed for new emergency tech technologies. Mm -hmm. So regulations need to be flexible, need to change to enable the new technologies to be actually utilised properly. Actually, uh, uh, regulations, change of regulations is one of the game tender, changers. It has to be, it has to be there, right? We all know that to upgrade your networks takes a long time. So you've got to be able to utilise technologies today mm -hmm. whilst you're upgrading your networks. Mm -hmm. So, and that's the, the, it's the regulations, both in terms of the ability to connect, mm -hmm. but also the revenue streams that can flow out of those processes there are constrained by regulations that are, have existed for a long time. Mm -hmm. So you think that, uh, because we had some discussions also, you know, what is the role of uh, bat batteries in the system, discharging, recharging, so it was quite complicated actually. But it's so important, yes, that uh, you optimize the process, yes? It's important to fully utilize batteries. Batteries can do a lot of things, but people only see parts of it there. They look at batteries being arbitrage. They look at batteries being auxiliary services. They look at batteries being synthetic inertia, but it's when you can actually pull it all together in a one environment there, that's where batteries become very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and uh, people, they are aware about that or not? Like, I mean, like your potential customers? Most customers use batteries to support a current, like a solar farm. They use it, okay, we can use batteries to store our excess power. Mm -hmm. So they don't have the degree of knowledge of exactly what batteries can actually be used for. So they'll come to us, they'll talk about storage facilities from the solar directly to batteries. That's when we start to talk about other types of services batteries can be used for. Mm -hmm. But yes, most companies or most clients don't understand the full range of services that batteries can operate with. And uh, does it also concern utilities? Utilities themselves, there are sophisticated utilities when it comes to back batteries but a lot of utilities are actually just starting to adopt or, or start to look at batteries in their, in their utility space. So no, they're, they're not in that sense there. They're in the early stages. Now, what is that actually the situation right now for renewables in, uh, in the country? Australia has a very high percentage of, uh, of renewables mm -hmm. in the market. And as a result of that though, we've got a very, very poor network. So as a result of that, we now start to have lots of problems in terms of constraints 
system strength issues, etc., like that there. So the industry as a whole is coming to grips with how do we solve these problems? Mm -hmm. And they're starting to consider the battery technologies as being actually able to solve those types of complex problems. The one of the solvers. That's right, absolutely. Yeah. Right, so, so yeah, so it's actually getting into the next stage of the game, if you like, in the sense there that how can we, we've got all these renewables in the network now, we can't utilise those renewables mm -hmm. to their full potential because our networks don't allow that to happen. It takes a long time to build networks. What can we do today? Mm -hmm. And that's where batteries and those types of technologies actually become extremely useful. Okay, so last time, uh, so uh, last question, what would be uh, your advice to European utilities, uh, taking into account your experience in the utility space, but also in uh, energy storage space? Consider regulations that enable new technologies to come onto the network sooner mm -hmm. than without actually constraining them. Get ready to adopt to these technologies. Get your regulations to allow for this type of thing to come into play. And uh, are you ready also you know, to support European colleagues, eventually if they need any help? The answer is yes, and, and, and there's learnings from both sides. We've got learnings here while I'm here now. We learn from what's happening here. They've got different problems in the market. We have different problems in our market, but ultimately speaking, their problems, we're going to have the same problems too. The problems we're addressing right now will have problems down the track as we start to lose more and more spinning reserve, more and more coal-fired power stations going off the network. They'll start to see the problems that we're occurring right now. Mm -hmm. Likewise, we're seeing the regulatory problems, the customer problems, the how to get networks working together and so we can learn from the European Union, the, the, the area here. Okay, so like you became also a member of the club and uh, co-chair for Australia, so I will give you one task, yes, to connect uh, European utilities with Australian. You give me a long extension cord and I'll do that. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. <laughs> and uh, last but not least, uh, uh, how did you like the event overall? Oh, the event was great, a really good day. Okay, thank you so much. That was Clean Tech Business Club and Your Electric from their amazing event with the guests who arrived here from the more far, far, far away place on earth. Thank you so much. Thanks.